so as uh, thank you for the introduction, um, I'm Nuno and I'm, I'm presenting Atlas and FABFT, a modular open source BFT framework and consensus protocol. Now, in the submitted paper, we actually only have reference FABFT, but we believe this was leading to a misunderstanding of our contributions and it didn't take into account the efforts made since the submission. So because this work was being confused with just another BFT protocol implementation, we decided to clarify this by separating the contributions into Atlas, a modular open source BFT framework, and FABFT, a consensus protocol built on top of this framework. Now, what problems are we trying to solve here? Uh, the main problem we are trying to solve is the lack of a framework that's capable of providing apples to apples comparisons between various BFT ordering protocols. Now, the lack of a publicly available high performance framework leads to a large duplication of efforts for any developers who want to implement novel BFT protocols or uh, other uh, type of state transfer protocols. This then leads to suboptimal implementations of uh, boilerplate code because the developers understandably want to focus on their algorithm and not uh, other parts of the system which are not directly relevant for the research. So what this means is that most comparisons between other uh, ordering protocols are actually comparing not just the ordering algorithm but the entire surrounding infrastructure and all of those things that are not actually related to the soundness of the algorithm. Now. This makes the development of new protocols very hard because not only do we have to assure the correctness of the algorithm, we also have to assure the correctness of the entire surrounding software. And another problem of this approach is that new uh, ordering protocols are not immediately compatible with existing applications. So developers would have to re-implement them from scratch and that leads to a very late adoption. So how do we plan to fix this? Uh, we plan to fix this by providing Atlas to the community. Atlas is our Rust-based BFT modular framework, which is comprised of various highly optimized modules that uh, aim to explore multi-core um, abilities in modern machines. We then also present FABFT, which is an ordering protocol uh, that is built over Atlas as a proof of concept. Uh, to show that our framework is capable of executing large scale uh, ordering operations and is capable of tolerating uh, faults and all other necessary things to be a successful BFT framework. And we are also looking forward to using this to contribute in whichever way is possible to the Falcons ecosystem. Now, here we can see um, a default uh, replica of Atlas. This is a replica made for state machine replication in particular. And the, the interactions between all of the modules can be seen by the arrows uh, in the picture. So for communication between all of these modules, we utilize the message passing schema in order to reduce the need for synchronization primitives and uh, shared memory locations, which also brings another benefit, which is when a given module of the system is operating a bit faster than the other, given uh, some spikes in uh, client requests or something like that, we actually get a buffer that allows those interactions to accumulate and be processed when the system comes back down in usage. So we lose no uh, performance and we keep every mo module running at the its peak speed. A downside of this is that uh, we have to manually adjust uh, the speed of each module because if we have a module that works a lot faster than all of the others, we might get uh, bottlenecks in the system and that might ruin our performance. Another issue with this approach could be, for example, the lack of scalability, since most of the threads are actually defined at compile time, not really at runtime. So one could argue that uh, this design doesn't you know, allow us to properly uh, use the multi-core capabilities of very powerful machines. To address this, there is a thread pool that is responsible for all CPU heavy work that is not pictured here, but it can be customized in order to use even the most uh, high performance CPUs available. Now, the first module here that we'll discuss is client pooling. Now, the studied uh, state of the art SMR uh, applications that we saw uh, usually utilized either a shared channel where all clients would place their requests, which would uh, create a large point of contention or have a proposer that is responsible for taking requests from each of the clients and then forming the 
uh, or decisions that will then be ordered by the consensus. And in the case of blockchains, we usually have memory pools, uh, which uh, are shared memory pools that can be accessed by all of the clients that uh, have various workers. This also introduces a bit of a point of contention since all of the workers have to access the same transactions. Now, to solve this, we wanted to divide all of the clients into uh, pools and handle the, their requests separately. So each of the pools has a dedicated worker, and that worker will uh, collect requests from the clients and then uh, pass that uh, those collected requests in batches instead of individually, which again reduces the amount of operations that have to be done on shared memory. And the next module is the preprocessor uh, of requests. So uh, requests can be, of course, faulty, as well as uh, having the possibility of having faulty replicas means that we can see a request more than once. So we can see a request either sent from the client, repeated by a client, or forwarded from other replicas. So we can't uh, provide the ordering protocol with uh, repeated requests because that would be wrong and the ordering protocol would be uh, ordering the same request more than once, which could lead to problems in the application. So we developed this module to deduplicate requests and also to track which requests we have already seen and have not yet been decided. So if a leader fails, we require this information in order to perform a view change and uh, continue executing the protocol without problems. Now, uh, we will discuss a little bit about the clients and how they operate. We designed the clients to be extremely lightweight, so, can, so they can be run on any computer, from tiny embeddable systems to incredibly powerful computers that uh, run multiple thousands of concurrent connections. Now, to handle the clients and to provide a simple API, we chose to follow an RPC-like uh, request uh, slash response delivery. So uh, what we do is we have a session, which and each session only has a concurrent uh, request, so that corresponds to the RPC-like program API. And then we allow each client to have an potentially unbounded number of sessions so we can achieve uh, concurrency at its will. Now, having discussed about Atlas, uh, we will talk about the actual consensus protocol that we implemented, FABFT. So we had to implement a consensus protocol that demonstrates that our framework has the ability to support a high-performance uh, ordering algorithm that can withstand hundreds of thousands of transactions a second so that it can actually be used to develop uh, ordering algorithms that uh, test new theories and that's and uh, that proves that our framework is not the bottleneck so we took various proven ideas from pbft and not smart and then we built them with various optimizations in order to develop a ordering protocol that could really stress our framework. One of the optimizations was based on MIRBFT, which partitions the workload of actually uh, proposing requests and sending them to all of the replicas in the system. This is the most, both in uh, the most resource heavy uh, task since it uh, requires both networking and CPU both to sign the massive proposed request and to actually send it to all of the replicas. So being able to partition this work across the entire forum makes it much fairer and leads to better resource utilization and much better performance. Our next optimization was based on a number of uh, papers we read, uh, but we decided that uh, most of the approaches we, we have seen was not were not optimal. Why is that? Because most of the approaches we saw actually focused on attempting to actually parallelize the consensus decision. So that uh, led to, for example, having a thread per consensus decision that was being executed in parallel. What we observed from our testing and from our experience was that we actually don't need a thread for each of the consensus decision. And that just introduces a lot of overhead to the operating system because it has to context switch that many more threads, when in reality, each of the decisions is only bound by the I.O. that, uh, that uh, is required for it. Most of the time, it will actually be sleeping. 
So our idea was to multiplex uh, a number of decisions onto a single thread uh, and then have that thread process those decisions in a um, in a non-fair way. I mean, as in the sequence numbers that are closest to our latest decision will be given priority over the sequence numbers that are further away from it, since they are the most uh, important uh, pieces to our performance. This allows us to saturate the network much more effectively, since we can have a number of uh, watermark uh, decisions running in parallel. This watermark should consider uh, network latency, the proposer speed, the processing power available, in order to keep the network always saturated with requests. Because as we know, with PFFT-like uh, ordering protocols, we spend at least 60% of the time not sending any requests of the network. So that can be considered wasted time, which we want to reduce. Now, another one of the issues with the uh, fault-tolerant systems is the tolerance to fault. So in order to add resistance to generalized uh, faults, like all, of, all nodes in the quorum failing, we had to develop a persistent storage system that was capable of providing us with guarantees that we could then utilize to provide those guarantees to the users of the system. So our persistent storage is, uh, basic, is a very basic system. We have a couple of workers that draw uh, work from a multiple producer, multiple consumer channel. And as an underlying uh, database, we utilize RocksDB because of its proven performance and reliability. On top of this basic system, we develop two modes, out of which we will only discuss the strict persistency mode, which is the one that offers the most uh, advantageous guarantees. With this mode, we intend on guaranteeing some features. Firstly, when a decision is passed to the executor, so when it's executed by the system, it has already been persisted into storage and can be recovered by any of the replicas of the quorum. So this means when a client effectively receives F plus one replies to a request, that means that that request will never get backtracked and the replicas will always be able to recover it, even in the case of generalized failure of the, all of the replicas in the quorum. And another guarantee that we have to do is that we have to maintain the order set by the consensus, even if the persistent storage finishes storing those decisions out of order. So to do this, we introduced another layer between the uh, ordering protocol and the actual executor that takes care of receiving decisions from the ordering protocol, receiving notifications from the persistent storage layer, and then deciding which decisions can now be passed along to the executor. So finally, we have a comparative evaluation between our framework uh, with FABFT and a number of other BFT SMR frame, uh, frameworks like BFT Smart and Temis in this case. Uh, we, in the bars, we can see the operations per second and the lines represent the consensus latency of the protocols. We can see that Atlas is able to handily outperform uh, both the tested systems by around five times performance. And we can see that the consensus latency is very comparable, except for the uh, one kilobyte test, where we saw a large spike in latency due to what we believe to be a heavy contention on the network. So when we are performing around 4,000 batches a second compared to BFT smarts around 100, uh, we see that the network gets hammered a lot more. And the, when the requests are put at a significantly large size, we start to see the increased latency derived from it. Now, um, this is just a test that shows how our framework is able to handle faults and uh, successfully recover from them. But since we are running, running out of time, uh, we will skip straight to the conclusions. So in this presentation, we introduced Atlas, a modular BFT framework that allows for the easier development and comparison of but BFT consensus protocols and applications. And we presented FABFT, a consensus protocol built on top of this, um, of this framework, which aims to show that it can indeed and be used uh, to develop novel protocols and that it has the capability of achieving uh, several hundreds of thousands of operations per second. So it can serve as 
a good way to benchmark any type of uh, ordering protocol. As future work, uh, we plan on developing novel state management and transferring primitives. Uh, and with the introduction of these uh, primitives, we aim to make failure recovery faster, as well as reduce the development burden on the application developer. And hopefully, we want to introduce, uh, as along with this, uh, abilities to shard applications and the parallel and speculative, speculatively ex execute uh, requests in parallel, uh, thanks to our new novel state management uh, systems. Hopefully, bringing not only unprecedented levels of scalability, but also uh, lower levels of knowledge by the developers. And that was it. Thank you for the attention.